Hello everyone, welcome back to the Between the Lines podcast, but it's not really a podcast anymore, it's now a talk show, because everyone and their mom has a podcast these days, and I like to be a special snowflake. And, now going on with the theme of having this be brand new and revamped, I have thrown out the old co-hosts, all of them, and I have a brand new co-host introducing Tyler! Hey everybody, you had old co-hosts, so I'm not even the first one. Wow, I just feel dirty now. You're not. I, 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 I had old co-hosts because I, I used to start making this back um, right after high school. So <laughs> nice. So you're bringing it back from the dead. Yeah, no, it was. A, a ba- you know, it's it's so funny because it, it was dead for a really long time, and then I brought it back once, and then it died again. So this, it's 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 had a few resurrections this time. Hopefully, it lasts a lot longer this time around. You just need to keep keep hitting it with the defibrillator what, what do you call it defibrillator <laughs> tongue twister the defibrillator <laughs> yes thank you the defibrillator that's perfect the 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 clear button the <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it'll be fine it'll be good uh, i i want to come up with a new splash screen for it actually because the old one i i just like quickly did on my laptop way back then and then when i redid it for one episode i i used video game footage so now i'm not really sure if i want to do that or like take a new picture what i'd love to have is one of those like you know how you see the audio wave thing yeah and it's like wavy wave i want to have that but i don't know how to do that i so. think there's there's got to be a software you can use to make those because that'd be really cool i yeah i think it'd be really fun stuff um so yeah uh, if you're new to this, uh, usually on my talk show, I like to talk about video games and movies and just um, basically just those things, little fun things. I always try to talk about kind of what I've been up to also creatively. Um, so that, that that always comes up once or twice. So And now that I have another filmmaker in, in presence with me, he can also talk about what he's been up to creatively. So there's a bit more than just me announcing my own news. So, with that said, Tyler, why don't you give everyone a little bit of introduction about yourself, let them get to know the new co-host, who you are, what you do. Uh, well, as you said, I am a filmmaker, and I think I always will be because I just love movies, and I've always had a passion for that kind of storytelling. To be able to move somebody through picture, make them feel something or escape something, has just been amazing to me. So yeah, I love filmmaking, I love video games, all that jazz. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree with you with that. I'm wanting to give people an escapism and stuff. I've always just liked bringing people joy, so that's, that's basically my main thing with filmmaking as well. What what made you want to start making films? Like, like from what, what was the thing? I know you gave like kind of a broad perspective, but like, was there ever like any significant event or anything that happened? Like a specific moment where I said, "This is what I want to do." I don't yeah. I don't know that I can say there was a specific moment. I think it was just a culmination of movies that I've seen and enjoyed. And I do remember there was a point that in my head that clicked that was like, wait, you can do this. There are people out there that are making these movies. And so I've always been a fan. I've always been a fan of that. I've always loved like sort of illusion and magic. And that's pretty much what movies are to me and once i realized you could actually pursue this i wanted to make that stuff of my own oh that's cool yeah for me i think it um very much because as a kid i love to tell stories and make up my own little stories and stuff like that you know i do with my toys and everything and uh my mom huge huge movie watcher watch movies all the time so there was that and i think See, I originally really, really wanted to draw. I wanted to be an artist. Yeah. I wanted to make comic books and draw. Uh, spoiler alert, I suck at drawing. I, I can't draw anything for the life of me. Um, tried for years, couldn't do it. Very hard. Uh, I have ADHD. I think that also is the focusing. It's really hard for me to focus and do stuff. And I just really want to draw it out, but I, I don't have the time to do it. I just could never understand the, the whole thing. I remember uh at california adventure they have that like learn how to draw a character kind of thing and um the guy was showing us how to draw i think winnie the pooh and he, or yeah i yeah, know it was winnie the pooh he's like okay start with a square i'm like a square what the hell no that's not how you do it and uh 
<laughs> I, uh, I, that was the moment because I, I just couldn't pick up on the whole, okay, you got to do the line thing. And like later on when I was in high school, I kind of figured it out. I took an art class and um, I just couldn't do it. So then I moved on to wanting to write books because I was like, well, I really like writing stories and it's so much easier just to write a book. So I was doing that for a while. And uh, I think just at some point, I just realized that um, I took a digital video class and I really enjoyed YouTube and I started doing that. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And then I took a film history class and just one day I was like, like after class I checked it. I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I, I want to make movies. You found it. Yeah. <laughs> It's 2023, and uh, yeah. I really like that because it shows that you've always had a passion for creating things. You're just, you're just a very creative person, and I feel like creative people really need an outlet. For some people, it is drawing, it's music, it's writing, and you've you found yours, and that's awesome. I, I mean, similarly, I love to draw too, but I can I can make little doodles and things. That's as far as that goes. I just I always need an outlet. I don't know. You're pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, and I, you know, I've always, I've always kind of filmed things when I was a kid. Like I, I used to film stuff on my 3ds, and like yeah. I had a little camcorder that I used to do, and I thought that was so awesome to be able to film something. I was just reminded I would film stuff with that because I liked the 3D camera, and so I did that in. Uh, how, how old was I? Probably like what, 12 maybe? When, when did that come out? Middle school. So I'd film stuff in the doctor's office, and my doctor yelled at me because I, she thought I was filming her. And she like demanded <laughs> to for me to take the SD card out for her to have so that the footage wouldn't get out there. Oh my gosh. Like some kid's really going to do anything with 3DS footage. Oh yeah, no, totally. It's gonna... Like what are you up to in yeah. this office? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the joke there is that um, the 3DS, you could store those on the internal memory as well as the SD card. <laughs> So She's got to take the whole thing. Swap it to the. So you, you, you turn it to the to the SD card, but it, I think it automatically um, saves it to the eternal memory. Or it could just be completely wrong. I haven't used the camera app on my 3DS for years. Uh, that's a good segue, actually. Uh, the 3DS. That's uh, yeah. That was probably the first gaming device or console that I had ever really tried to save up for. I had a ton of birthday money and I just, I was counting down the days for that to release. And I remember standing in line at GameStop, just waiting for that. And when I finally got it, I was so happy because it was, it was really the first time I had like saved up for something that I wanted. Damn. You know, actually for me, um, it, it's funny with the 3DS because prior to the 3DS, I would always get the handheld. Like I had the, I had the Game Boy Advance and then I had the DS Lite, but I always really got them way later than all the other kids had gotten them. So I was always kind of the last one to get them, especially with the Wii too. It was years before I actually played the Wii. Anyways, so with the 3DS, I remember my mom asked me for my birthday. She's like, so for your birthday, do you want the DSi or do you want, or would you like a DSi? I'm like, I don't want to get a DSi because I feel like they're going to come out with a better handheld soon. And this was before I, I was like, it would be on the internet and stuff. So I, I didn't know about any of the rumors and stuff. So my friend's birthday comes and he gets a DS Lite. And then he says, dude, they announced the 3DS. And I really regret asking for a DS Lite. <laughs> I was like, I knew it. I knew there was something to wait for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that birthday, I got a 3DS. And I remember opening it at, at my party all the kids looked at it and i was i was the that was the very first time that i was the first one to get the console out of my friends and i was like holy crud but you were the mvp of that party i i felt pretty mvp about that that's awesome the only downside to to getting a console when it first releases is there's nothing for that console at first <laughs> So you're just sitting there like, okay, well, uh, not much to play, but this is really cool to have. <laughs> That's a very exciting thing about having a PS4. At that time, I got that when it first came out, and there were no PS4 games. Yeah, no, I bought my PS4 last year around this time, and um, Black Friday came up, and I just, like, swept the, the GameStop and everything. I just got all... I, I have an entire library of PS4 games. I think I only... 
I had to have only spent like maybe a hundred or hundred fifty on 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 it all because like just how crazy it was to buy them all. Because I'm a I'm a physical collector, so I try to collect everything physically that I can. The biggest console that I saved up for was the Switch. Actually, that was the first console that I actually really saved up for. And uh, my mom ended up surprising me because she, when I finally had enough money, uh, and we went and bought it at Best Buy. This was still at the time where it was still kind of rare to get a to get a Switch. Like it was still kind of hard to get your hands on a Switch. And I remember we got it, and my mom was like, "Well, that's your birthday present." I was like, "What?" And so. I got a Switch and I had three hundred dollars just to spend on games. That was great. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I was a little late to the party with that one. I really wanted it when it came out, but uh, I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't afford it. So I've been like searching for a, a job for like weeks, and I finally landed one, a pretty decent one. And the very first thing that I bought with my paycheck was a Switch because now I finally had my own money to do so. Nice. Been eyeing that sucker. Oh, that's great. You know, that reminds me of a, um, there's an old Nintendo commercial for the N64, and it was back when they were releasing all the N64s with transparent shells, and it's this guy, and he's working at, like, a, like a diner, and the, and the old dude who, like, owns it, he's like, you know, you worked really hard, here's your first paycheck, and it's, and it's the exact amount of money you get in N64, and he's like, so what are you gonna do with that, and he's like, I'm quitting and buying an N64, and he just drops the broom he has and just walks off. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> I was like, damn. So yeah, that just reminded me. That's the only reason for a job, really, right? I mean, honestly, yeah, just to buy an N64, man. That, that's the only that's, that's the only thing you need to get a job for. As soon as you have enough to buy that sweet console that you want, you can you can quit. Just, well, get a couple games, too, and then you can quit. I mean, that's what I was going to say. It's like, like, I remember watching them and being like, does anyone need games for that, too? <laughs> like, it's, it's a correlation here we're forgetting about. It's, it's, there's the console, and then there's no games. Now, I like to think that that guy from the story is jobless and gameless. So he's sitting at home doing nothing, regretting his life choices. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just pressing buttons on the on the N64 <laughs> controller, and he's like, yeah, this is fun. This is pretty cool. This is, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the shell see-through. <laughs> uh, so speaking of that, what games have you been playing lately, Tyler? Lately, I've been playing a lot of Tears of the Kingdom and, oh, a lot of Rocket League. I've been really getting into Rocket League again. Really? Yeah. Okay. I was never a Rocket League guy. I, Fortnite was my jam. What have you been getting into? Uh, I've been playing... I just finished Castlevania Circle of the Moon on the uh, Castlevania Advanced Collection. That one's for the GBA. That was the first Castlevania for the GBA. Uh, a pretty fun little time. I beat it. I bought my friend that collection because I really wanted to get her into Castlevania games. So she's been playing it, and I've been waiting to play the next GBA game in the series because uh, I want to start with her because I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'm not sure if you'd like Castlevania. It's a little too pro gamer for someone. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Have you ever played Hollow Knight or? Um, no. What style of game like is that? that? Uh, it's, it's known as a Metroidvania. You heard of Metroidvania before? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Uh, it's it's kind of like you're kind of basically almost. I guess the best way to explain it is like you're kind of in a maze and you're searching for ways to like you're you're almost in a big old maze and you got to find different power ups to you know get through more of the maze. Oh, okay. And then you gotta, beat bosses and stuff so that's basically what a metroidvania really boils down to it's kind of hard to explain got you but, um, i understand what you mean now and then Baldur's gate 3 i've also been playing um that's really fun it's basically a video game version of D, &D uh so that's cool never been a big D, &D fan but seeing a lot about that game it is very fun I uh, I get the hype now. You know, at first initially I was like, I don't, I don't get it. But now I'm playing. I'm like, okay, I get it. They they really polished this game, made it really good and stuff. So how close is it to D and D? How free form is it? I know they have their own set of rules, but can you really? Is it pretty open? As far as an RPG goes. I mean, I would say yeah. Like you can do a lot. There's pretty much. I mean, like it's it. It's a lot like Elder Scrolls if you ever played Elder Scrolls, but like there's the dice rolls and stuff that you gotta do, and then there's um, 
like you can do a little thing you can change your character stats just like in D&D &D. it's it's literally D&D &D, so it's it's pretty very close and I would say it's pretty open uh, for someone who doesn't like D&D &D, I actually really enjoy this game so I don't really think it's very limiting there's there's a lot you can do I'm surprised you don't like D&D Ah, uh, you know, there's there's some history that I uh, have with D and D, um, but some things I just I just have problems with with the game itself because like like I know there's one thing that I can never get a get around is like what the player knows versus what your character knows. Like I remember I was playing D and D once and like one of my friends had had an, a spell or something and I was like, oh, you should use that spell, and he's like. Yeah, but your character doesn't know that I have that spell. I'm like, but but I I do. <laughs> yeah, aren't you the character? Yeah, I was like, and there was another time where like the the DM was like, yeah, okay, so you have this item and this is what it does. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe I should equip it. And he's like, yeah, but your character doesn't know what the item does yet. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you got to roll an investigation to figure out what it is. I'm like, but, but you just told me what the item does. <laughs> Yeah, but your, does, your character doesn't know, so he's not allowed to do anything with it. Like, you're not allowed to use it strategically like that. And I was like, so I'm just expected to completely forget what I can do with this thing? Like, no, I, I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that? Just some game design things. I'm kind of like, all right, let's, let's, let's back off a little bit, okay? <laughs> Uh, it's just some a few quirks that I just find a little. But in Baldur's Gate, it's pretty, like, a lot of that BS is kind of not there. The roles can sometimes get a little frustrating, but other than that, I like it. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's very free freeform RPG-wise. I mean, for example, there's a boss that uh, we were fighting, and there's, like, this pit. And I was playing with my friend Durr. Um, so, and so the pit was there, and he was like, oh try pushing the boss off the pit and i was like i guess i could try to do that so i used the shove action <laughs> and i rolled high enough and i just pushed the boss immediately died the the, the encounter was done oh my god <laughs> and i was like oh okay that worked <laughs> so it's just i don't know that just I gives an that. example of like exactly how freeform it is i would say it's worth it i play it on the steam deck and it runs pretty pretty well on the steam deck so um but yeah, other than that, I don't know. Would you? How much of a gamer would you say you are, Tyler? Because I know from our conversations, I would definitely call you more of a casual gamer than like a really like deep gamer. I don't want to say pro gamer because I'm not I'm not exactly a pro gamer. An but. epic pro gamer. Epic pro gamer, yeah. Definitely not a noob when it comes to gaming, but I am more of a casual gamer, not a hardcore gamer. I don't dedicate a lot of a lot of time to it so i do play very casually which just means when i can yeah no, i get that what do you think of tears of the kingdom love it so far i love how open it is nice. honestly there are so many quests so many missions that you could get sidetracked with and it's so hard to complete the main quest but it's so fun because you don't want to it's <laughs> you're just exploring and i, I love that aspect yeah, no, I I think Tears of the Kingdom gameplay wise is amazing. Uh, I know you haven't played Breath of the Wild. It makes me want to go back to Breath. I I will I will say that I think the two are distinct enough where Tears of the Kingdom is not better than Breath of the Wild and vice versa. I think they stand next to each other fully. Um, personally, story wise, I think Breath of the Wild has a better story, um, but that's just me i don't know i don't know how far in the story are you in tears of the kingdom not super far like i'm still following some side quests i just got my first spirit the champion yeah spirits or the, the sage spirits I yeah sage. sage oh no no i got i have two now so i need to i think there's three more okay so you have two uh yes there's technically three more uh, but there's only two more that you should know about at the moment. <laughs> I, 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 how would you know there was three more? What? <laughs> I think I think the game tells you actually. I, I don't know how it told you. I think so, or I saw it online somewhere. But it's okay. I'm still enjoying it nonetheless. That's good. Have you found any of the uh, the memories? Yeah, I found one. That should tell you how far oh, I am. Oh. I found a single memory. Wow. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember. I was listening to your your precisely late podcast and um, uh, the the episode two. I remember you were saying that you like to try to stretch out a game as long as possible. Yeah. And um, I know. I know your second person on that, uh, Bert. He was like, you know, you can do the the side quest after the main story. They they don't automatically end. And I have to agree with him there. You know, it's 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 fine to do the main story, Tyler. It's 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, but I like to stretch out the main story. It's like dessert. You got to save it for last. So I like to do everything that I can, but and it's a lot easier to complete. I'm not trying to 100% it, but that's just how I like to play. No, I get that. For me, uh, I did I did the same thing in Tears of the Kingdom that I did with Breath of the Wild. I was like, I want to get all the main stuff done. I want to do all the side quests, and then I want to uh, get like enough hearts and stuff, and then I take on the boss because I still want to challenge, but I don't want to be completely broken. So, uh, and that's what I ended up doing. Uh, I didn't do that for Tears of the Kingdom though. I ended up doing all the main stuff. I did a few side. I did all the side quests that I had, and then I was like, I just want to get to the final boss because at the time I was I was in production for the new short film uh, that I just made, and um, I was like, I really need to focus on that, and this is really like hard to juggle. So I was like, okay, well I have enough done. Let me go fight the final boss and. and you know, because I've done all the main stuff and all the all the story fun things and everything, and so that that's what I ended up doing. But I got all the memories and everything. That's what I wanted to do. But I'm not a big fan of the story, if I'm being completely honest. But I can't talk about that much with you. <laughs> Story's kind of lacking. So you just like Breath uh, of the Wild's better. I... You know, a lot of people would argue Breath of the Wild has a really bad story, and I can see that. Um, Tears of the Kingdom story was really good until it hits one part, and then I'm like, "Well, that sucked." I, 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 I literally I remember because I got all the memories, and the final memory uh, after I unlocked it, I, I just, I, I literally put down the controller, and I was like, "I don't think I want to." I, I was this close to quitting the game. And being wow, really? <laughs> Yeah, it really, because I was really into the story, and, like, the story's a big thing for me in video games. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, yeah, I could tell. I I like a really good story, and so (laughs) when it happened, I was just like, if if you've played Tears of the Kingdoms, uh, for those at home listening, and you've finished all the story and all the memories, you probably know the part I'm talking about. Um, A lot of people like it and think it's cool and everything. For me, it was just very much like a... Oh, okay. And I just kind of was like, took me a second and I did some side quests and I was like, oh, that's why I like this game. That's right. So then I just played the rest for gameplay. But story-wise, I was pretty much like, yeah, I don't care anymore. I was checked out at that point. I was like, all right. (laughs) Which really sucked, but it, you know, it is what it is. Um, The game's still a 10 out of 10 for me. I still love it. But yeah, no. So was that would that really be a um, nine out of ten if the story is such a big part of it for you? You know, I guess that, that that's a good thing. Good question. I don't know. I I could make it a nine out of ten, but it's it's so good and the music's so good. It is. And can do so much in it. It's a beautiful game. It's so well designed. It's, a beautiful, it's visually game. beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I uh, I love the cell shading. It looks so good. Nintendo did file a patent recently for the hand and the hand's abilities. So it looks really? like while we might not get a direct sequel to Tears of the Kingdom, we will be getting another game with that technology, that ability. Okay, that's interesting. Um, they could also have just done it so that uh, to lessen the amount of uh, games that do do that take inspiration from that but i'm not sure oh yeah it's definitely <laughs> to keep that protected too yeah it's like that that's our idea we're gonna we're gonna stick on to that but um no that's interesting i didn't even know about that damn look at you tyler bringing out the news for me you want to hear some other news yeah i'd love to hear some news i don't know if you heard that microsoft allegedly tried to write up a deal to buy Nintendo. Oh, that's right. I did hear about that. That yeah. Which is crazy to me. I could never imagine Nintendo selling to anybody. 
I yeah no there's there's no way that that that's either false or it happened either way Nintendo would never sell to anyone I I mean I know like Nintendo's not the biggest of the three even nowadays even with the Switch but I I know for one thing that at this point it's I don't think Nintendo could ever fail that or fall that hard these days like I think it's virtually impossible at this point yeah definitely not I'm sure Microsoft wishes they could have Nintendo, but that that has to be fake news. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's not surprising that they probably would consider doing it because um, of like how many studios they bought. Like at this point, I remember watching a video. It was like, well, what IPs does Microsoft have at this point? And it's just Halo. It's just Halo. Everything else they bought. I give you think about it. Everything else. It looks like according to Gamespot here that. It's not serious, and don't expect Master Chief and Mario collabing anytime soon. Uh, it's just a pipe dream. Microsoft wishes they could take Nintendo. That's basically it. Of course, they want to buy it. It would make sense for them. Oh yeah. They would. They would be massive, but that's not going to happen. I mean, I'm sure Nintendo, if they could, they'd buy PlayStation and, and Microsoft themselves. I mean, every every corporation, if they could, they'd buy the other ones out. Um, but it would never happen. That said. I do, unless I'm wrong, I do think Microsoft and Nintendo still have a really good relationship. Um, Stanley, like, like, I remember they were starting to really work together uh, software wise in terms of like Microsoft sharing their software and making cross um, compatibility with some games and stuff. Yeah. Which I think is pretty cool. It, it is cool. I'm glad to see that that's working together. Yeah, it's nice. I know at one point, I don't know if it was just a rumor or if it was something that was in the works. At one point, I remember Microsoft wanted Xbox Live to work on Switch, but I can't remember where that went. I know it was a thing. I just don't remember how much of a thing it was. Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer is the CEO of Microsoft, and there was the leaks about them buying Nintendo came from an email that he had sent out. Right. And one of the parts of that email, he noted that Nintendo's boards of directors have not pushed for further, uh, or no, where, sorry. He basically said that Nintendo's not taking advantage of their hardware when they could be pushing that out a lot more for more growth. <laughs> Damn. So of course he wants to buy it. Of course he has his own strategy for how he would make Nintendo huge as if they're not already. Yeah. The theme about Nintendo is they've never been interested in, like, pushing their hardware to the max and everything. They've always been more interested in trying to innovate and be the do do the next thing. Yeah. And you can definitely tell that in all their consoles. Yeah, they could uh, very well adapt and, better, better technology. But like you said, that innovation is what pushes their creativity with the games. That's why they sell. Yeah. They outsell every time. Well, they it well yeah it's their characters I mean they have such iconic characters at this point um, I mean Mario at this point is who it's, it's big one Mario you never heard of Mario no the who's the guy down the street at the Italian place no 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 he uh, uh, if he's a plumber maybe yeah he is a plumber at a pizza oh, restaurant oh okay cool cool uh, does he jump on turtles now that you mention it. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen him do that. It's that's pretty. That's interesting. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah, I know he's huge. You can't. That's that's their whole brand. Exactly. It's it's, it's a huge thing. Uh, okay. Well, let's Nintendo switch it up a bit. What movies have you watched recently, Tyler? Ooh, look at you with that segue. Can we just acknowledge that segue? That was great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been on a horror kick for probably the last five years, so I've been watching a lot of scary movies. I recently rewatched The Witch. Have you seen that? The Vavitch. The Vavitch. The Vavitch. The design title that I absolutely hate. <laughs> really? Okay, let me hear this. Uh, this was a rant that I, I can tell. Let's hear the rant. <laughs> I just don't like the poster. It the W. I get what they're trying to do. They're putting. They're pushing two capital V's together. It reads as Vavitch. Yeah. <laughs> and it just hurts my brain because the title's front and center, and that's all I can read. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be The Witch, but I, I see the two Vs, I'm like, The Vavitch? <laughs> uh, yeah, now I get that. Um, 
so so you rewatched the rich the witch recently yeah it was it was quite good it didn't hold up as well as it had the first time i saw it in theaters okay but it was still very well done it was an interesting time period in which they they said it everybody speaks in very old english and it's a it's a folk tale about a witch that lives out in the forest who eats babies and kidnaps children as witches do not not these days now as but which is yeah, as witches yeah. used to do <laughs> Witches be witching which is be witching yeah yeah my friend uh my, my friend and roommate michael uh he really likes that he keeps wanting to get me to watch it i just haven't been interested i might watch it this year this month this october but i'm still not sure i don't know it never really caught my interest it's a good one as far as building tension really but yeah what have you been watching uh let's see what haven't i been watching at this point um i uh this will be new to the audience so last year i started watching all the universal monster films according to the wikipedia page uh on release order so and i'd stopped around october because i'd started um doing my research and everything for my next short film and at that point uh then i got too deep and i was like okay well now october is coming so i kind of want to finish it off so recently i watched creature from the black lagoon lagoon last night i watched revenge of the creature from the black lagoon and that was really fun then in the movie theaters i saw what have i seen so far i know i saw the gran turismo film how was that you know a lot better than i expected uh have you seen ford v ferrari yeah, that was great. I loved that movie. I really enjoyed that movie. Uh, it will ruin Gran Turismo for you. <laughs> if, you if you see it, uh, yeah, no. Um, I, it, just, it just didn't have the... The racing scenes didn't have the same punch as uh, Ford View Ferrari had. And that that's that's even with um, the racing... Uh, that's even with watching Gran, Gran Turismo in a theater and then watching Ford V. Ferrari at home on a TV. Not even with my setup at the time. I, I was watching on like a little tiny TV and it was still like hitting really hard. So I don't know. It just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I thought the camera angles sometimes were odd. Some editing choices were a little bad. Some music was like, okay, well, what are we using music here for and everything? Like, I don't know. I remember there's a scene where, like, the main character's in Tokyo. And so it's, like, showing Tokyo sites. But, like, they're playing, like, the most American rap music kind of thing. I'm like, what? what's going on here? You have, like, so much Japanese pop music to, to choose from. Why? <laughs> like, I wonder if they don't get the rights to that. I mean... It's, 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 I... I, I and it's a it's an American audience that they're going for, so I understand why they did that. I, but it it's, doesn't feel like a fair a fair comparison to compare that to Ford v Ferrari because it's just like one is more about the development of a racing car versus a, a gamer turned racer, right? So I just feel like they're very different tonally. Yeah, but see that that is kind of the thing though, because like Gran Turismo is like you know it's it's a PlayStation PlayStation title, it's a Sony thing, Sony's in Japan, it's like. There, there's enough of there where interest is like okay yeah this would it would make sense and plus i feel if you're gonna show tokyo and show like the setting and everything you want to very much engulf and like make the audience feel like they're in tokyo with the main character uh, and everything okay so i didn't realize there was a, a scene in tokyo yeah. that makes com complete yeah, sense that's what I'm saying. that you would use that yeah. kind of music to set it up right that's what i'm saying um but yeah yeah i don't <sighs> Yeah, I I will say that um, I used to be the kind of person who was like, well, this kind of movie is that kind of movie. You can't really judge it and stuff. And I I have grown to very much not agree with that kind of way of thinking. I very much am a person that I'm going to hold every movie to the same standard. Uh, obviously, if you're a short film and you're only on YouTube, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a freaking jerk and be like well this this movie should do this and that and this with the production it's, it's it's that but any movie on the big screen made by like an actual like studio and everything there are some things we're always like okay no you, you should be doing this you should really be trying your best like you have no reason not to try 
I, I always expect every movie to try. Even if it is just a cash grab, I expect you to try <laughs> with things. And, like, I, I always... Because I feel like if we just give some films just, like, a, a pass and everything, that, that stifles the growth of, of the film industry, personally. At least the creativity behind exactly. it. I feel like a lot of it now is a cash grab, as you said, and people aren't passionate about it. They're just working because that's their job. They're doing what they're paid getting paid to told so they're not there for the creativity of the storytelling and i feel like i agree with you a lot of stuff lately feels like there's there's nothing no passion that goes into it exactly which sucks because they're spending millions of dollars they have more than enough resources to to make something incredible right i don't don't know it's it's i don't know there's something it's something me and um mikey talk about a lot where it's like well once we get in it once we start making films and stuff for a living, like, you know, if we ever get to that point, you get to make it the way you want to. Yeah. yeah, You get to make it the way you want to, but it's like, well, sometimes maybe it'll just be a film just to make money. It's like, for me, if I ever get to that point, every movie I make, I'm going to put my heart and soul into even, even just the, the, the B list film that I'm just doing it for the paycheck. I'm, I'm still going to try it. Cause I, I don't know. I just can't not try to make something as good as possible. We need more people that think like that. <laughs> I will not take a job that I cannot get behind. I cannot sell something that I do not believe in. I feel like with film, uh, I mean, I'm a workaholic, so I think I would take any job unless like it was like a choice between something I can get behind and something that I'm like, eh, and obviously I would choose what I could get behind. If it's like, I'll just take, uh, if I'm at a, I, I can take whatever I can get kind of thing for me. Even if I can't get behind me, I'll be like, well, how, how can I make this as good as possible to get behind it? And so that's what I usually go with. Yeah, just how far can you take it? Take your craft? Exactly. And I, I feel like in there, even even that can be creative later. Even if you don't care much about it, at least try to make it good. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you can't get behind the script, but you can. You want to be damn well sure that you could be proud of putting your name on that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm an editor. That's what I strive to be the most. And uh, you, you know, even if I don't like that script, I'll damn well make sure it's cut right. <laughs> so, but that's my thing. Uh, other than that, what else did I see? I have my letterbox open actually. Let me check it. It's it's so it's so nice letterbox. <laughs> uh equalizer three i watched that was that was all right it wasn't it wasn't like amazing uh it was a lot calmer of a film than i expected no john wick i'll tell you that much <laughs> hmm. you ever john wick four yeah no john wick or four. you're talking about john wick the original uh not even john wick the original i would say like it's it's very uh, it's an oddly peaceful film for how many violent scenes are in it <laughs> I think by the third one, they've kind of relaxed and retired now. I would assume, maybe. I'm not sure. You ever watch the Equalizer films? I don't... No, I don't think so. Really? Yeah. Eh, I don't know. I maybe saw the first one a long time ago, I, I but I haven't seen the new I one. I did see the first one when it came out. I really enjoyed it. never saw the second one, and then my mom was like, well, let's go see the third one. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Why not? Um, and let's see. Oh, I really enjoyed A Haunting in Venice. That was fun. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, that's on my watch list. <laughs> I won't. I won't spoil much for you, but it, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not like amazing, but it's pretty good. No, feel free to spoil it. We could talk about it. <laughs> no, I don't. Wanna, I'm not. I'll still watch it anyway. I'm not a spoiler guy. I'm sure I'll have my own opinions. I'm not a spoiler guy. I won't do it. Yeah, we'd like to see that one. I will say, probably is a good time now for our commercial break. So, uh, hopefully audiences can enjoy some, maybe some old commercials and maybe some tunes, I'm not sure. Uh, and, uh, we'll come back in a bit. Payday, Mitch. I'm proud of you. With this, you join the American workforce. A rare breed of determined and dedicated... And quit. Now, 129.95 gets you an N64 and a second atomic purple color controller free.
I must interrupt the dance music for a moment. I have an urgent message from police headquarters. It appears that an unknown man by scientific means has made himself invisible. He has attacked and killed a police inspector and is now at large. The chief of police appeals to the public for help and assistance. The invisible man works without clothing. He will have to seek shelter. You are requested to lock every door and window that every outbuilding he may use to hide in. The police will be glad to receive any suggestions that will help in capturing the fugitive. Remember, he's solid but cannot be seen. The police appeal to the public to keep calm and to admit uniformed search parties to all property. And welcome back. We hope you had a good break, got some water, chilled out. Um, so, spooky season is upon us, Tyler, or some of us um, consider spooky season has already started uh, in the beginning of the month and everything. What about you? When do you consider spooky season to have officially started? September 15th to the date. Why September 15th? Because you're getting into fall at this point. Okay. Early September is the slow introduction. You're enjoying your September coming out of a hot summer. Moving into fall now, towards the end of the month, that's basically a countdown to October and does definitely count as spooky season. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, In my book. What about you? I think that's good. I mean, for me, I definitely would say, yeah, September is a good start to spooky season. Um, actually, I would probably say August nowadays. But this year, um, I don't know about you, Tyler, but spooky season for me uh, i've been on spooky mode since february because my short film is a horror film so as far as i'm concerned spooky season did not arrive it caught up to me <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say spooky season never ends yeah it, it never ends for me i I've, I've been on the spooky train since february it's 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 been a tough one i, I i'm finally like well it's about time all right it's it's about damn time uh, yeah but no, I love spooky season. Um, I, I would say August. I don't know because August sounds like a. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's always sounded like a very fall um, word. If that makes any sense. It does. Okay, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad it does. I'm glad it's not July. Just me. To me, it's a little too close to July for me. Okay. July, known as the hottest month out of the year, especially this year. Oh, yeah, so I feel like you're hot. still cooling off from summer, not quite moved into that fall yet, but I can definitely see fall vibes in August. Yeah. It's it's just the name. August is always like that. I think it's also like school would always start um, in August for, for everything. And so like, you know, you always dread school. Do you have any traditions during spooky season that you do anything, especially in October since October is coming up? Always got to bust out the spooky decorations. That's why I bought Mr. Bones McJones here. It's a little prop skeleton. Mr. Bones McJones. Yeah, you did, you did show me that. Where'd you get that guy? Got this guy at Target. Oh, okay. Uh, but he's not, it's not quite an adult-sized skeleton prop. It's rather a child. I call him my child. Your my child. son. <laughs> Your son. Bones McJones. <laughs> <laughs> I love, it, I love it. How much you get him for? He's twenty bucks at Target. Twenty bucks at Target. Jeez. Yeah. If you want the life size, that's double that. That's so that's why double? I just got the small child here. Bro, that boy better be dancing. What can he do? Does he do anything? <laughs> he can tell you jokes. He can tell you jokes. Okay. Can Can you have? Uh... What's a skeleton's favorite snack? Wait. No, I don't know what ribs oh yeah <laughs> have you ever seen that that video of the, the the skeleton he says that joke he's like ribs ribs uh, yeah exactly what is a skeleton's favorite snack <laughs> i said what is it god damn you <laughs> uh, that's a classic video what about you what's your what are your halloween traditions well since 2021 uh, I did this thing because I felt that I don't watch enough spooky film. I don't. I don't make it. I, I never made enough of. I, I never seized enough of October. So in 2021, I started this thing where every day I would watch a different horror film, 
and if I missed the day, then I would watch two, two or three, or I would make up for it. And it was just as a way to like be able to really watch a wide variety of things. Sometimes I just like pick a random thing that I saw on like Netflix or anything, and then I would rate it and I would make a list out of it. And um, so that's that's become kind of a personal tradition of mine. Sometimes my friends join on it, but I don't think anyone's has ever been as dedicated as I am. Like I really go into it. it's like okay, I watch them. I, I'm dedicated to watching them all. I didn't do it last year, but one of the other things I would do is watch one episode of the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You show. And that was really fun, too. Great show. Oh, I love that show. Oh, I loved it since I was a kid. Classic show. Super fun. It's, 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 it's a good time. Probably the best of the Hanna-Barbera's. Really, I mean, that's basically Hanna-Barbera's. Oh, definitely. I, I would say iconic I, I know i would almost argue that that scooby-doo is to hannah what barbera is what sonic is to sega where it's like they make other stuff but you only know them for one <laughs> yeah um, and that's pretty true for nintendo and mario i'm sorry what <laughs> i know i know i'm gonna get a lot of hate for that but really? that's the main that's the main dude yeah well as, as someone who's more casual on the gaming side i i I guess I could see that. It's it's hard for me because I, I'm so deep into video games and everything. It's like hard for me not to. But I guess yeah, for like a mainstream person or like a general audience. Yeah, I know they person. have a lot of other great characters. But yeah, I'm just thinking general audience. It's it's Mario that sells. Okay. But that then gets people into Nintendo. Other yeah. you know titles. I mean Zelda, Pokemon, Mario. Those are the big three. I've always I've always seen. Oh that. yeah, you know what. Would you, I would argue that Mario is bigger than Pokemon. No, no, it's Pokemon bigger than Mario. It's gotta be. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know, because, like, I just feel like, like, everyone loves Mario, but, like, Pokemon is just so big. Like, it, it the, the stupid Pokemon Go app, people still play that r- religiously. The anime has been running for years. They've, you know, they, they've had yeah, the multiple anime. animated movies, but then, you know, the live action film, the toys are always there. Um, there's always been plushies, the Pokemon card trading game. It's all that stuff is still continuously going. I've, I see Mario toys in the stores nowadays, but it's only recently so, gotten bigger. You're totally right on that. Uh, looking at this infograph here, Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise of all time. I know my stuff. And in eighth is Mario. Mario's eight. Like I said. That's that's still pretty impressive to have. And these aren't all just Nintendo titles. Yeah. But it's pretty impressive for Nintendo to still have two on, in the top 25 here. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Would you like to know more of this list? I find this really interesting. I actually would. I'm very curious about what's more of the list. Let me, let me hear it. Would you like to guess number two, the the second highest grossing media franchise? You're not going to get it. Okay, now I, now I feel like I need to challenge this. Let me see. You probably know who makes this title. Sega? Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty, really? Yeah, media franchise. So it's not right, just gaming. Right, right, right. Okay, so I gotta think media franchise. Okay, Hello Kitty. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, because that that's pretty much like. And then of course you got. Oh, well, yeah. what's number three? That's that's huge. Number three. Then you're going into Disney. You got Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the which Pooh. still stands tall. Yeah, of oh, all, man. above Star Wars. But, I mean, I mean, do we want to count Star Wars as Disney technically? Or? No. Yeah, no, I don't. No, but even like Disney or not, the fact that that's above Star Wars, the fact that Hello Kitty is above Star Wars. No, that makes sense because you, cause you got to think sh- about Hello Kitty isn't just like a, a movie or anything. It's 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 a brand. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, no, it really is a lifestyle. Um, and they have like so many different characters and everything, and they have makeup lines and T-shirt lines and freaking everything so it's it's very much yeah. yeah and then winnie the pooh right under that i'm surprised it's still relevant 
that that is the shocking one. I mean, I love I, I love my boy Winnie the Pooh, but I that is kind of shocking, especially given how little besides brand stuff and like him being like on every freaking thing you could ever get. Uh, yeah, it is really surprising. Goes, yeah. It shows how much a little bear can do. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to that horror film. Oh yeah, that horror. Dude, that horror film. You was remember weird. that? The... I watched a review for it. I never watched it, but I did watch a review. Let's watch it and review it. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Let's see if they used if they stayed true to the character. <laughs> I can tell you right now they didn't. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be. Yeah, I'd be down. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! No spoilers. No spoilers. I already know how the entire movie goes. <laughs> <laughs> so Mario, Mario sits down here at number eight. Okay, what's before Mario? Right before Mario is Disney Disney Princess. Disney Princesses. Disney Princess is just that much above Mario at forty five billion. That feels like cheating. Mario, it's like it, it does. Like it's just crazy. Sixteen different characters that are all across different. Th- like that. That's cheating. That's so cheating. That's bringing in. 45 billion oh and you know what it is is merchandise oh yeah merchandising that's what brings in all the numbers yeah that's that's why pokemon is so high too it's most of it is merchandise that's what i told you right you have the card game you have the you know the shop the plushies the toys everything that's all it and and that's the thing mario definitely like as a video game anyone can pick up a mario game and be like yeah yeah, i'm having fun playing this and everything pokemon the video game is a little too some people aren't always into the pokemon video game but anyone's gonna love a plushie yeah. or a toy or the cards to collect yeah. there's like just so many different ways to experience pokemon whereas mario it's very much as a video game yeah it's like okay yeah we can do this but that's that's why hey, you I, know mario does out profit pokemon in video game territory yeah. which which is surprising and, and mario goes over pokemon because of that well one because mario games are like really good and everyone can play a mario game and then you have Mario Kart, and then you have Mario Party, and then you got like Mario Tennis, and you have way Yeah, where's Pokemon Tennis? Where's Pokemon Party? Hmm? Uh, there was... Pokemon Kart? I'm sure people would love to play it as a Pokemon I, racer. I, I, I wouldn't care. As someone who's an avid Pokemon fan, I, I do not want to play a kart, <laughs> Pokemon Racer Kart. Not, that, you don't want to put Squirtle okay. on a little bike? A little bike? I... I, I I, I don't really want to know. <laughs> Take Bulbasaur track. Take Bulbasaur track. <laughs> uh, uh, the the what is it? Goomba Cove or something like that. The, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, there, I, I just know that in Mario Kart Eight, there's a. I guess it was a GBA track. There's a Cheese Mountain or a Cheese Desert or something. <laughs> uh, that one's always stuck with me. Oh it's yeah. Like, Cheese. Absolutely, cheese. I think it's cheese mountain. Cheese mountain, yeah. I don't worry. Something like that. Wario's War- got his own mountain. That, that that one's a fun one. I'm not a huge fan of Wario, but yeah, that, that one's a fun one. Oh no, it's called Cheese Land. Cheese Land. There we go. Cheese Land. Did you ever play the GBA Mario Kart game? I did. I played like a lot. I love those old Mario Kart games. Never been a big Mario Kart guy. Could never get it good. But I, I did. I do have fun playing it single player. But multiplayer, uh, that's where I simply suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, online? Yeah, online. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't do this. I'm not good. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I play competitively. Really, competitive Mario Kart player. That, that's, that's where the pro yeah. gamer comes in. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> when it comes down to Mario Kart. Oh yeah. Smash Bros. Two, of course, but you cheat at that game. I do not cheat at Smash Brothers. How how do I cheat at Smash Brothers? You're scary good. And speaking of scary, let's talk about some other horror films that you're into or may have watched recently. That was a that was a good segue. <laughs> um, Last Voyage of the Demeter is was so good. I really really love that. As a huge monster movie fan, Last Voyage of the Demeter was amazing and i'm oh that's so good it got slighted at the box office definitely yeah i heard about that was slept on i i wish it had gotten a better release but it didn't and that just makes me really sad (laughs) have you seen it yet i don't i don't think you've seen it right 
no that but i do i want to see that and i i saw that it flopped which really sucks because it looked like a good addition to that genre God, it was so, good. so i'm glad to hear that you had good opinions of it and because i was worried that it might have had something to do with the quality of the film no i i personally think that it, it was just release time i mean it was it was coming off the coattails of oppenheimer and just I, I don't know. I, I don't think Universal gave it as big of a showing as it could have, and it just big of a push. Yeah, and, and probably some, saving another Halloween movie for October. <laughs> Halloween ends, or does it? I know, right? Doo, doo, doo. No, they they, they throw him in a damn tr- uh, car compactor. There's no coming back from that. At this point, you got next re- episode. <laughs> he lifts his hand out of the car compactor, okay. crushes through tons of steel and metal oh my from old pieces of, of car oh my God. no they actually in the I don't, did you ever watch halloween ends yeah <laughs> i mean i i was thinking well they could do and then they show his head get crushed and i was like oh okay yeah they they, they really wanted to make sure this guy's dead <laughs> or is he or is he or was someone else behind the mask no oh my gosh Ugh. he's coming back this October Halloween ends too. It gets endier. Part to the sequel. <laughs> I, I think also just sometimes movies just no audience wants to see it or is just curious, and that really sucks. But uh, honestly, I, I, that's one of those movies where I think I would rent it on Amazon if you came over just just to watch it. I, I that that would be worth the fourteen bucks just to rent it. <laughs> if if I want. did they do Dracula well? Did they serve my boy good? They they served him really well. I really enjoyed how they how they showed him as someone who absolutely hated the Renfield film. Uh, this movie was so good. Ah, uh, it, it restored my faith. Excellent news. Go watch it. Go support that movie. We need more movies like that. Seriously, rent it if you can this this Halloween or buy it if it comes out. I I say it was it was worth it. Um, you know, go to your go go to your good old Albertsons, uh, your local Albertsons, and use that red box that you walk past nowadays and never use. Yeah, I would say support something like that. Yeah, no, it's always worth supporting movies. Well, it, the the script was in production apparently for since like 2016 or something like it had been in production for a really long time so definitely was a kind of like a okay let's just throw this out there to kind of use but i feel like despite all that they really tried their best with the film and yeah i enjoyed that unlike renfield which was just total disappointment of every single thing do you know that movie has a mortal Kombat reference no i didn't yeah was it funny at least did it serve its job as a comedy it was meant to be funny i don't but I, as a comedy i mean I, I laughed at one or two parts um i didn't care there, there's so much where it was like this isn't a universal monster film this isn't a monster movie uh, you know, I, I, when I made Anxiety's Moon, I, uh, I really studied what makes a monster film, a universal monster movie, what a universal monster movie is. And um, this didn't do it. This wasn't there. Um, I know you don't know much about universal monster films. You're still very new to it. Um, but this, it, it just Renfield wasn't there. And it didn't help either because I never wanted it to be a comedy either. I just kept seeing like, oh, it was in a cage movie it's called renfield and i was like oh this is gonna be so cool because i love renfield in the original dracula film and i was like this, this is gonna be such a fun film like it's it's gonna get right i really hope it gets like super like deep and like super like oh like mentally psychological horror and stuff because it, and, oh yeah no yeah. one look at the trailer that's not what you're getting no and and it was looking like that from the from the production set photos and everything i was like oh yeah this is gonna be awesome and then and then literally the trailer comes out and i hadn't even seen the trailer yet i just saw the poster and it said i think the oh let me let me rock a google on that really quick yeah yeah so and then so i so on instagram they had the the, the poster and it, it comes up and i'm like oh that looks really cool and then the tagline says sucks to be him and immediately i was like oh <laughs> i knew at that point 
from that tagline that this was not the film I wanted. And I watched the trailer and I was like, okay, okay. You know, maybe it could be good. Maybe it could be good. Maybe there'll be a good blend of horror and comedy. Maybe it was just, let me get a chance. Let me get a chance. And then more trailers come out. And I'm like, please be good. And I go to the opening day. I'm I'm excited. Earlier that day, I watched the original Dracula. Um, you know, I, I I went in really happy. And the final thing that did not help solidify my my dislike of Renfield was the Voyage Voyage of the Last Demeter trailer played for the very first time. I'd never seen it before, but that trailer played before Renfield. So I'm sitting here already hmm. not excited. Expectations high. Yeah, ex- expectations low, knowing that this is not the type of film I would I wanted. And then all of a sudden, this Demeter film comes. I'm like, what? this is what I wanted. What the hell? I want to watch this instead. Like, yeah. I don't know who decided it was like, yeah, yeah, let, let's show this vampire film before this really, like, it's like, no, no. Um, and after I watched it, I remember I was just sitting there like, I, I don't know if I'm too biased to, to fully uh, be able to review this film. So I took my mom to see it. She didn't like it. And then I took my friend to, to see it, and she really enjoyed it. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that it's just a really bad film. <laughs> 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 the jokes are that they don't land. Um, they fall flat. Do you, do you care about spoilers at all? No, I'm probably not going to watch that. Okay, cool. It didn't, it didn't look good to me. It wasn't really what I was looking for. You're correct in that. Um, yeah, so those at home, if you're going to watch Renfield... Uh, Go ahead. I really hope you enjoy it. I didn't. Uh, but yeah, th- these are spoilers. So, f- first off, the guy who plays Renfield does a really great job. Really liked him. Uh, very very mix of, like, kind and stuff. I I really... There's there's the part in the beginning where, like, it kind of, like, he talks about, like, his relationship with Dracula, and they recreate some scenes from the original Dracula film. And it looks really cool. Um... And I'm like, I wish it was in black and white. I wish they'd continue to do that. They don't, sadly. Um, there's this whole side plot with the mafia and the police. And there's this guy who... He's actually the voice... I think it's Ben Schwartz. He's the guy who voices Sonic in the Sonic film. And he's so annoying in this film. He like keeps saying, like, I'm... T-, like His character is Teddy Lobo. So he keeps saying, like, I'm Teddy fucking Lobo. And I'm like... What are we doing? What are we doing? And then Dracula himself, Nick Cage, he's really good. He plays a really good Dracula. Oh, that's awesome. But the problem is, I feel like there's points where he's really good as a Dracula. I'm like, oh, this is really great. And then he'll do something. And I can totally tell that what it is is like Nick Cage is doing his Dracula. And then they do a take, and then the director goes, "That was great, Cage. Now, now give me the Nick version of that." And and it's like I can definitely tell he wants to not cage it up, and and someone behind the scenes is like, "Okay, now we want you to do this, but in your Nick Cage way or something like that." And it just it's. I it's, feel like that's the only way that he has. No. With anything that he approaches. I, I would disagree. I would disagree because he really does a good, subtle version of uh, of, of his Dracula. And just very much like scenes where like, I can tell he's just trying to do his own Dracula. And then all of a sudden there will be another scene where like he does something in that crazy way. And I'm like, what? This doesn't feel like him. It feels like someone told him to do that. Um... But I, I guess that's up to speculation. No one will really know unless I ask the man himself. But if I ever get a chance to meet Nick Cage, I'll ask him that. <laughs> I hear he's he's not great in person. I, I don't know. I will say that in interviews about it, he said that he went. He was more inspired by the Hammer Dracula than the Universal Bela Lugosi Dracula, which also immediately told me I was like, okay, yeah, but this is supposed to be the Universal Dracula, not the Hammer Dracula, so okay <laughs> uh, yeah this is very clearly their 
own take on on this character i I don't know i mean it just it didn't feel it just felt like a movie there was just action scenes there's like dubstep at one point i don't at one point there's a mortal Kombat reference for literally no reason it's just like they do the x-ray thing and i'm like what why was that in there what the hell it's just it's just bad it seems like they just wanted to have fun with this one probably i don't know maybe i'm too engrossed in the in the old 1940s 1930s films where i i know exactly what i want to see and, and stuff but among the, the the universal monster community everyone mostly hated renfield <laughs> some oh yeah i can imagine there's some more big people that that were really big that really enjoyed it but not for me it wasn't for me i also didn't like the muslim man remake from blumhouse but I'm in the minority for that opinion. I don't know that you could call that a remake, more just a different telling. I wouldn't even call it a different telling. It just uses the name. Yep. I mean, I mean, a different telling would. The be- only thing it says tr- true. Yeah, the only thing it says true to is the title. Exactly. The characters aren't the same. Uh, the invisibility okay. isn't the same. It was like their realistic, quote unquote, way of trying to write off how that was possible. I would argue that. The, but it's uh, it's the same sort of magic. It's yeah. it's still fiction. It's science fiction. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, because I, I I recently read the uh, the original book and God, I loved the original book. It was really really good and stuff. And yeah, it only just solidified my my dislike of that film, but. I will forever be a uh, minority in that. You you saw the the remake, right? I did. I did. What did you think of it? It wasn't bad <laughs> as far as uh, Blumhouse goes. It was very signature of Blumhouse. As far as like to the original title, no, it did not borrow anything from that other than the name, like we said. Yeah. Uh, but like as a standalone, I thought it was okay. It was a C movie to me. I really liked some of the stunts that they had. I thought those were cool from some of the behind the scenes shots. As far as the technology, the cloak, I didn't like that as the write off explanation. So yeah, I would give it probably a C. It's it's passing, but you could do better. Yeah, no, I I would agree. I mean, it, it was alright. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was there was some things I like, but in terms of like, I'm like, no, you you don't deserve the right to call yourself invisible man film like it's what's a better title for that one uh the cloak of invisibility no i would i just you know maybe like in in, uh like invisible see now i gotta think about it it's about it's about abuse the floating knife the floating knife (laughs) you bring up that damn floating knife man oh my god i could go to a rant about how that scene sucks awful in the middle middle of a packed damn restaurant and nobody else sees this stupid floating knife and all of a sudden obviously nobody holds the knife like like, what (laughs) what there's no security camera there's nothing like what are you talking about What's going on? <laughs> I could tell. I could see your distaste even in your in your writing for your upcoming project. You know, I, I suppose we should talk about that a little bit, um, given the fact that we've we've made mention to a few times. Uh, the new short film I'm working on is another Universal Monster homage to The Invisible Man. In the script, I do I do jab at the at the twenty uh, nineteen film, and I uh, or twenty twenty. I think it was, it was rightly last, so. It was the last film, rightly so. You would say so. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I made it. I made a big jab, and actually, that is how Tyler came to be in this uh, talk show with me. Tyler is the main lead, so if you don't know what he looks like. You'll know what he looks like, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to the twenty-three p- people that listen to this, go go watch that once. Uh, just be on the lookout for that. Yeah. that's gonna be great. We put a lot of uh, hard work into that one. Oh, a lot. That's why I said February because I've, I've been I was doing research. I um, 
I did the same thing with Anxiety's Moon. Well, it, w it was sort of the same thing because I, I love the Wolfman so much. So I, I, w I already knew like everything about him, and I had just finished reading all the novels that I could about him. And uh, so then I went to the script. So this time I was like, okay, so I'm going to watch all the... I was going to read the first book, and I'm going to watch all the mo old movies that, they, that was based off him. And I put out casting, and I feel really bad for, like, saying that technically Tyler won the role by default. But if there was other people, I would have chosen Tyler, because the man killed it in the audition. I, I, I knew immediately this was the man for the job when... He, he killed it. I liked it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, that means a lot. Yeah. One, one of the stipulations I had was I gave a scene, and I wanted them to give their own take on them. And I probably, the next time I do an audition with that, I'm probably going to try to be more like, don't replicate this. Just do this in your own version of it. Because I feel like when I sent you that, you very much were trying to replicate the scene to a T, because I know you gave the British accent and everything. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, we're, we're sticking true you, to the original. You were here. sticking super true, but I appreciated the enthusiasm. Like, I can tell this guy's having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such a fun character. It was such a fun role. Uh, yeah, it was. It was fun. Uh, what was it like working with me? I, I, I gotta ask that. A lot of fruit snacks. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of pretzels with salt on them, even though specifically asked for pretzels without salt. Oh yeah, this guy was a total diva on set. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, for first time set, I thought it went very smoothly. That's right. Oh yeah, that was, that was your first acting role, right? At least working with you. No, yeah. That's right. I've done other stuff before, but nothing in terms of like a short film. Oh right, nothing like it was like a like a bit like probably as big as this. I don't want to pat myself on the back or anything it wasn't huge or anything yeah the, oh yeah i mean incredible production i just thought everybody was great you know i i, I gotta ask though in your opinion how secretive should someone be about a film they're making or anything like, like what is the point where it's like okay obviously we know what this is gonna be about you don't have to be super quiet about it you know I think up to the point until the trailer comes out, depending on how much you want to reveal. Of course, even that's never going to give away everything, yeah. but it'll give you a general sense of yeah. what to look for. Okay. I think, yeah, I just, I like the mystery. It builds up the hype, the expectations. Yeah. No, I'm struggling because I, I like to, I like to go into movies blind. I try to wait every trailer possible aside for that very first trailer, which is usually known as the teaser trailer. Um, so for me, I, I just try to avoid everything. And even if I do find a film, like if I find a f film on the AMC app uh, and I knew nothing about it, and I just see the poster, I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. I'll just click on it and I'll watch it. And um, usually I really enjoy that. I like going blind. Yeah, that's what I did. Oh, yeah? What would you? Wait, which one did you do that for? Just circling back, I did that for The Witch. So I had oh. no idea what to expect. Okay. You can kind of get an idea by the poster, but I didn't even see the poster. I saw the name. And it was well worth it. I think that's what made it even scarier to see for the first time. Damn. Was I had zero expectations going in. Okay. I want to say... So there is definitely something to be said about that. About staying blind. Yeah. Oh no, there, there's so much about staying blind. Because I used to watch every trailer possible. Big, big on like, oh yeah, I gotta see it. And then I realized I was playing a game every time we saw a movie. Where it was like, oh that was in the trailer. That part was in the trailer. I... I pick out all the trailer parts and i hated that because i missed so much when my mom would just take me to the movie theater and we'd go see a movie i had no idea what i was seeing i was just gonna see a movie yeah you don't know what's what's playing you don't know what's in know what, it's the kid i don't know what the heck it is i'm just like gonna get i'm just a six-year-old your kid. ass dragged to the theater yeah i'm gonna be like you want to see this and i'll be like uh sure maybe you get taken out of school for the new indiana jones movie that you didn't know was out you, that happened to you a crystal skull elementary didn't have any idea why we were being called to the office and <laughs> we went straight from school the middle of the school day to see that movie Lucky son. and that was a good memory although you know i know how the movie did but that was a good memory you know one lucky uh, lucky son of a bitch um two i i will defend kingdom of the crystal skull i'll, I'll defend that film to the end of the earth i think it's a good movie you're a big shia labeouf head 
yeah, yeah, Shia LaBeouf did a good job, but I'm um, a big Harrison Ford. <laughs> so I, I think you know, yeah. Crystal Skull is a better film than Dial of Destiny for sure. I'm still waiting to see that one. Still haven't seen it. You're not missing much. <laughs> yeah, so so I heard. I heard he got an ovation when they first screened it at a festival, but I think that's more just for him, for his his legacy. Yeah, it's, it's just him. for his legacy. It's not. It's not for the film. Um, it's just not the same. Uh, but yeah, no. So I, I miss that kind of thing. I think the most recent film that happened for me was uh, Inside. Will and Defoe is inside film hmm. i knew nothing besides a poster that i saw at amc or i know i saw it on the on the app list and i just saw it i saw that it was willing to fell and i saw that it was just standing i was like i want to see this never watched the trailer i booked a ticket yeah saw it i went in blind to that just the same oh you saw it inside I did, yeah. I saw the poster, but I didn't buy a ticket immediately. I rented it later. Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I went to see that in the theater. Love Inside. That movie, 5 star, 10 out of 10. Amazing film. Blew me out of the water. Oh, well. Yeah, no, I, I'm a big Willem Dafoe fan, um, so I definitely thought this was a really good film. What did you think of Inside? I, you know, I'm a big Willem Dafoe fan too, but overall I wasn't impressed. Really? It lost me. What? It wasn't as uh, cerebral as I was hoping it would be. I think the concept was just stretched out. I, I, I will have to disagree with you there, Tyler. I'm sorry. I... Oh yeah, that's okay. I love him, and he did a fantastic job. But for me, just the movie as a whole did not work. Okay, okay, we we, we can we can do some spoilers. So spoilers, if you haven't seen Inside, go watch it. Really good. Um, when did it lose you? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just sort of lost me with with the drawn. I think it would have been better as a short film and not a feature length because it just felt very drawn out to me the time that he gets from the time that he gets lost and locked in and starts losing his sanity you sort of pick up on the idea that things have gotten chaotic and you know it's an interesting concept i, I really do like that but it just it there, when he finally escapes at the end by building this tower out of furniture to get the skylight that to me didn't feel like a cherry on top it felt like a waste of time. What? To build up to that point, I'll be honest, because it didn't have the impact that I, I expected it. Half the movie, the movie is movie him have, building and I just feel like... the tower and, and and slowly chipping away at each bolt to get through the skyline. How is that not the yeah. payoff? I think he could have done it in 20. <laughs> I think it would have been better as a 20 minute film because there's only so long I can watch him stack furniture. But he does other things. He learns how to do the water and he starts, you know, having weird dreams and like you see him slowly fall apart and like do different things and just go insane. Like The the weird dreams felt like that sequence when the raptor talks to Alan. What? No. In Jurassic Park. Oh my god. It felt too wacky ah. for me. I understand that you would go insane, you would but yeah felt too voodoo for me i thought it was amazing i thought like the way it looked the way it felt it was so cool it was be like what the oh hell? i loved it yeah the way it looked was great for me for me i just i'm just like technically like yeah it was impressive the way it looked the way it felt his performance i i'm just referring to the story that's what didn't work for me but like as a film i did i did like that i liked the how it was done but just i just the story is what kind of threw me off i will say it's 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 not a very story driven film, but I think it's a good slow psychological burn. And I definitely enjoy it for that. I don't know. I, th I think it's a very good character acting film for Defoe. And I don't know, for me, the cherry on top for the ending was, um, the letter he writes to the homeowner. And he's like, I, I just, mm -hmm. what it sticks in my head. Uh, when Willem Defoe, it's like to you, this was your home. But to me, it was a prison. I'm sorry for destroying it. And that was just like, yeah. damn, that's a, that's a line. 
that is a that damn <laughs> i don't know it's just, it is very much a slow burn yeah um i'm not usually a big fan of slow burns so the fact that defoe carried that for me it was just yeah i don't know phenomenal film i i think it deserved it to be completely honest yeah i see i totally see what you mean I wanted it to be better. It was just the story for me. I did like it technically, though. You wanted it to be better. So you just think that if it was shorter... I just want... I think I had such high expectations. Really? I Yeah, I think what it is is the slow burn. I'm not I'm not typically a fan of slow burns. Yeah, so, so you're like me. You don't really like slow burns, usually. See, for me, I think... Um, I think I went into it being like... This looks like... It's a it's a Willem Dafoe film. I went into it just wanting Willem Dafoe, and that's all I expected. That's all I wanted, and that's what I got. I and that's that's all you got, yeah. which was that's pretty cool. Perfect. Um, but yeah, it's I, I don't know. It's twenty minutes. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I think twenty minutes. You think he could do it in twenty? I think. I just think I there think wasn't Defoe a lot of there were a lot of plot points. In, I I think Dafoe could do it in twenty. I don't think the film could do. it. I think you'd be disservicing the film by doing it only 20. Cause I, yeah, totally fair. I, I mean, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. I'm not sure. But, and I didn't know you saw it inside either. I don't know why I never brought it up. I, I don't know. I, I don't think, what, what are some of your favorite actors actually, Tyler? Hmm. It's a good question. some of my favorite i do really like defoe i'm blanking i'm totally blanking right now do you, do you want me to list some of mine yeah what are some of yours what do you see my favorite actors uh let's see Willem defoe is probably one of my top favorite actors love that man um that makes sense i mean I, well, he scared me to death in spider-man when i was a kid and then I don't know. I've seen him in other stuff. I'm just like, man, this guy. Again, in No Way it. Home. Oh yeah, No Way Home, The Lighthouse, Inside. Ugh. He's just such a good actor, and he has so much fun with what he does. Um, I think he said in an interview for No Way Home, he was like, I, I wanted to do the stunts because it just looked fun. <laughs> so and I love that. that. That that tells you a lot about an actor. Um. Brian Cranston, another favorite actor of mine. Um, yeah. Found out about him because of Breaking Bad. And um, I've seen other films that he's done after, and I think he just does good forever. Uh, I hate that he wasn't in the in the Godzilla movie for the whole time. That really sucked. <laughs> I don't know that, that even that would have saved it, as great as he is. I actually really enjoyed the Godzilla film. I thought it was pretty good. You cannot tell me. Yeah, better than expected. You cannot tell me the sequence where they get out of the airplane and it's like POV and like it's all red sky. You cannot tell me that. This is not smack. It's a sequence. Oh, yeah. They had some cool shots. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. You you, you want to say that the movie wasn't that good, but then, then you think about different parts. And, all right, fine. It's kind, of, it's kind of cool. Parts of it were good. I would argue the whole film's good. I don't think it's like Oscar worthy, but I thought it was really good. I really had fun with it. What about uh, versus Kong? Yeah, I enjoyed versus Kong. I thought that was a good time. I want to rewatch yeah. it. Never got to see it in theaters. It really made me sad, but I had a good time. I I, I own it on Blu-ray. That was great in theaters. Oh, you got to see it in theaters. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a good time. I had fun with that. Which, you know, no Oscar, right? But if you're having fun, um, I think that's important. I mean, I would say that the point of a film is to bring enjoyment and fun. And if it does that to you, for you, then it has succeeded. Uh, that is why I've... That's why, for a long time, the Mario movie was what I was saying was my 2023 film of the year. Uh yeah that i mean talk about fun that movie was amazing i probably we watched that three different times it was so short which was the biggest complaint but it was great it did a good service to the characters it was just fun and unbelievable to see them 
when you're so used to them as like a controllable avatar. Right? Yeah, I know. And, and you know what? I will say, I argue that movies can stand to be shorter these days. I think run times, I think people try to make super long movies these days. And I like seeing when a film is only a minute 30. It's so refreshing. Hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. You just take what you need to tell the story. It's, it's just, you know, every movie has to be freaking two hours these days i'm just like three just, hours they all have to push close to three hours like if that's how long you need to tell your story so be it but don't don't blow it out the mm-hmm. run time just to blow out the damn run time <laughs> i don't know yeah you'll see that a lot of the times yeah and, and like i've been you know i was binging or you know marathoning all the you know some monster films a lot of them are nice cool 60 minutes hour 20 and it's, it's very refreshing um, than today's. It's very easy to just to pop in a film and really watch it just only for an hour and be like, okay, my day's good. Yeah, that's all you need. But yeah, the Mario movie, I don't care that it was short. I had a great time. Saw that three times in theaters. Every single time I had a smile on my face from beginning to end. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I smiled the entire movie all three times and my cheeks, I smiled so much my cheeks <laughs> hurt. Yeah. All three times. It's just so much fun to see that, to hear the music, that you know, all the different uh, worlds that animated together. It's just pure uh, joy. Yeah. And I'm a bigger Sonic fan than I am a Mario fan. Like, I love Sonic so much more. I love the, really? Sonic, the second Sonic movie. I love the games a lot more than I love the Mario games. Interesting. But the Mario movie, man, I don't know. I couldn't stop smiling. I couldn't stop laughing. Like I said, my cheeks hurt from smiling. <laughs> All three separate times, hmm. and it was insane. And I just, oh my god, that movie was just perfect. Oh, I loved it. Oh, it's, it's just, it's, it's joy. It's pure joy. Um, and I loved the the Sonic Two movie. Yeah, I oh yeah, I was just gonna bring that up too. I love that. It, you know, it wasn't. It's not gonna hit the same, but that one was just full of joy too. Who is, uh, who's that guy? James Marsden, in Sonic. Yeah, James Marsden. Yeah. And Jim was great jim carrey jim carrey is good yeah absolutely carried that movie he was hilarious in that it was such a good watch the first one's really fun second one's even better loved the second one really yeah except for the wedding scene. haven't seen it if we took out the wedding scene we'd be... you haven't seen the second sonic film no but you would say it's better than the first one yeah a hundred percent Oh wow! Okay, then I gotta I gotta watch that. I come on over. I have it. I own it. I love that film. Um, no, hundred percent, man. We 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 gotta watch that movie. Yeah, I gotta watch it. With you. Have you you haven't played any Sonic games? I'm guessing. I have. Uh, I've okay. never been a huge fan, but yeah, I've definitely played some. So I have an idea of the character. What Sonic games have you played? I want to know. I don't know the name describe it I, I could definitely tell you i'm i'm that big of a fan <laughs> okay so there's one he's walking around downtown it's a beach city walking on some cobble oh I can picture it. sonic adventure yes yeah at the beach city or sonic unleashed you're either talking about is is there a whale is there a giant orca that chases you at some point no oh okay then you're, you're probably talking about sonic unleashed but it it's been a while i just remember it being fun okay that's good i was just, i was just gonna say that's the difference between casual and more hardcore here so like you know i'll casually play it i'll pick it up but i probably can't name any titles exactly well i mean uh, that's what i was gonna say the difference between casual and like a a, a really deep video gamers because I, I mentioned a metroidvania and you had no idea what a metroidvania is and i wouldn't expect you to know what a metroidvania is but most like the more you know people who play a lot of video games they'll know what a metroidvania is when you, when you say it. it's one of those genres but um you learn something new every day yeah and i'm not trying to be elitist or anything i'm just you know kind of like saying like oh that's the difference and stuff yeah definitely so i hope you know other people are learning some more about that stuff too yeah to the 50 loyal listeners <laughs> did you like it better when it was just the uh the between the lines uh splasher or did you enjoy having the little gameplay and stuff uh just so that i know what 
what is the personal one and uh, I, I hope at least one person answers in the comment section just just so that I I, I know just one just leave just, a comment just one and please what are you don't, looking for please don't say I hear from yub because I that, that's the last comment I ever want to read again <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you should just put the Sans video on loop. Uh, just 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 put the Sans video on loop. That's what we want to see. Uh, I wonder if anyone ever caught that quarantine reference in, in quarantine when I, when, I, when I put the Sans video in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch it? The, the, I'm sure you had some. I, there's got to be one. Uh, Was there a reference in there? No, I didn't. I don't. I don't think I caught it. Yeah, there's. there's, there's I was a, watching too. Um, yeah, at one point when the multiple Xanders come on screen, there's three on a couch watching TV. And on the yeah. TV, it's playing the Sans uh, video. And one of them goes, yes. now this is cinema. And the other two start nodding their I, head in agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a fun watch. Go go watch that if you haven't. That was a, such a fun watch. You should link that. Uh, I mean, it's it's on my channel. So it's just just look for quarantine. It's it's the one where there's a big scary go. monster behind my head and everything. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I, I don't know. I have no expectations went in and just ended up committing to the whole thing. <laughs> I'm glad it's a long one. I wasn't sure if I would watch all of it. I was like, oh, we'll see where it goes. And then you know, it just it kind of blew me away. It was just a lot more fun than I had expected. Well, thank you. I didn't expect anything. I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that it. it caught your attention enough to you wanted to see the whole thing out that, that that's all i could ask for well really all i can ask for was that it brought enjoyment to you and it did, did a good job of that it was it was funny thank you it was really funny and i hope we get to see more like that uh you know my my roommate uh always has, has told me before that that's the that's the xander style it's, it's very much like a unique xander like comedic kind of thing uh, I don't. I don't know if we'll ever get that kind of of video back again. That Xander comedy back again. I'm not really sure if I'll ever bring that back. I hope we do. Really. I hope we get some of that in the mix. In the mix for the Universal Monsters, you'll never see that. None of the monster films I make will have that. I can tell you that right now. I disagree. You disagree? I think there are subtle. I mean, you can't help but put that into it. Even if you're trying to emulate a universal style, you could still tell that a lot of your persona comes through there. And there are some moments, some funny moments that do come off like that. It's not going to be the same, of course, as, as a whole comedy, but there there is some influence that comes through and it's fun to okay. see. Okay. So you'll see that. That's interesting. I never, I never realized that. I mean, Anxiety's Moon is a good example of that because really? it's very hard to remove that influence. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm curious. How? Where is it in Anxiety's Moon? I, I got it now. What I mean more so is just like you have a unique style, and that comes across. Okay. Interesting. I don't even know what what to call my style to be, if anything. I mean, I know I've really found my my niche in in, in knowing what makes a monster film, but other than that, I don't even know what, what I would call my other style. I would just, I, I don't know, what would you call it? I, f I feel like I'm, I'm totally just trying to trump myself, but I'm just curious, honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, your friend said it perfectly. It's just, it's just uniquely comedy and Xander whack. The, the wackiness. Is, yeah, I mean, it, it. Yeah, that's a good word for it. it, it, it there's a little, um, little wackiness, a little bit of a quirk to it that, that only you could produce. And I mean that as a compliment. Well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I, I know quarantine was pretty much the uh, it was almost the finale to all that era and stuff but maybe maybe one day maybe one day the, the old Xander will come back that, that that whole universe world and stuff there was ideas never really he, fell with it he do have a silly side he do, I do have a silly side I do enjoy my silly side you could be acting I, silly I do want to ask yes. regarding quarantine because I've heard I, I have heard from my roommate he said he i think a few other people have said this too the party scene goes on for way too long so i want to ask what did you think about the party scene the party scene with all the clones yeah 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 where it's like a whole it's like doing the spongebob-esque music and stuff and it's a montage and everything i liked that i thought i had fun with that because i really liked 
seeing all of the clones and I know how hard it is <laughs> or how hard it can be to stitch all of those together. It, it was hard. So just to see more of that was fun, in my opinion. All right. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I do personally do think it still runs a little too, too long. Um, and maybe this didn't translate well. Maybe it did, actually, because I, I know a lot of people were like, this this goes on for a long time. Uh, I, I wanted it to be long because I wanted the viewer to be tired by the end of watching this this scene i wanted them to be just tired like and and it's a long montage scene so i i wanted the the audience to feel like how xander feels by the end of it where it's just like drained and it's the same thing and it's just like oh my god hmm. and it, i could see what you're going for then okay well that's good i'm, I'm glad it, it sort of i feel showed. like that did translate well i mean if that's what you intended it to do, then I think I think that was achieved. If yeah. people are telling you that it's too long, that means you know it probably worked. No, that that's exactly what I intended for. I mean, I still think it was too. I I even think it was too long. It gets tiring to watch, but that was my entire point. I wanted it to be tiring. I wanted to like show that that part of the quarantine where it's like you're just tired of doing the same thing. And it's just boring. It's like there's no reprieve from it. So. But, uh, yeah, that, that film is, whew, I won't call it a masterpiece, but I definitely, I put a lot, that was probably one of the short films I put the most work into. That was one of my very first, like, most worked films before Anxiety's Moon. Anxiety's Moon, I put a lot more yeah, work that's, into. That definitely is clear how much went into it. Oh, that's good. I'm glad it translates. It, what I'm trying to say is it shows. It, it translates. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I worked on that script probably like around the beginning of quarantine, and I just kept going. It was really hard, too, because I was in a mental block for it. Uh, I was very creatively blocked for a lot of it, so I was just trying to figure out weird things to do and everything, and... I had a few other ideas for it, I remember, but I never ended up using them. Um, I know there was a whole sequence that got cut where I wanted, like, them... I, I wanted the party to be less of a montage and more of, like, them actually interacting and everything. And one of them says something, and, like, you hear the, the monster rumbling, and, like, everyone is like, whoa, what's that? And then... Hmm. Oh, I like that. But we never ended up doing that. I think it was just because I couldn't figure out a way to do it. And at that point, I completely forgot. And that's what I wanted to do. And just didn't end up fitting in the script and stuff. I was a very different person back then. There's a lot of personal stuff I won't get into. Um, but I remember that was like a big thing I wanted to have. And then the fight scene, I wanted it to be a lot better if I could. Of It was supposed to originally actually be animated. Um fully but uh i ended up going with a sort of pseudo stop motion it, not even really stop motion <laughs> i had a green uh poster board and um or a green green or a board and i, I slapped on a po green poster paper and then i just had lights and i got my little bit and i would just hold it in my hand and move it around <laughs> in front of the screen screen so you wouldn't be able to see my hand in the shots and everything and, and then i just keyed out and green screened it and then it, the keying took forever but i, I think at the end it, it worked out pretty well because i know everyone loves the monster scene like that's their favorite part of it which oh, i'm yeah. glad because i put a lot of work into that <laughs> yeah the build-up was well worth it oh, and i just really liked it as a metaphor for the anxiety behind what was happening yeah no, it's I'm glad that because I, I think we all felt that, and I think you, it, it, it did. It really did feel like quarantine in a in a dramatic way, you know. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, no, I very I, that that was the one thing I very strongly was like at the at the time. Uh, I, I stress at the time of writing it. I know by the time it actually released, um, the quarantine, everyone knew. We pretty much all had a good knowledge of what the virus was and what the, the pandemic was like and everything. Like it, it, we were pretty much on the download. But at the time of writing the script, nobody knew jack about what was going on and everything. And it was, it was anyone's guess for the for the general public, at least from what I was seeing and everything. <laughs> but. 
So yeah. I'm glad the monster oh, yeah. himself translated well into that. Um, and the sword fight, cool. I, 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 Good times. I, I wish I could have done more with that sword fight. If, if I could go back, I would have choreographed that sword. Cause at the time I was just doing it right then and there. I just did it off, uh, on my feet and I was just like figuring it out and trying to like figure out what I would want to do. And I was like, okay, well let's do this. I'll do that. Okay. Make the camera right here. And I'll just do that. Uh, I just remember I wrote in the script and then an epic fight scene happens that the writer has no time to, to read out, to write out for. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I it do be I, like that. Yeah. Definitely written some of those like, I get yeah, monologue goes here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those are always fun to have. Um, but no, that fight scene if i could have done more with it i, I would have um still love the uh when i break the fourth wall completely on that that was still my favorite part of it i knew i wanted it to end as a fourth wall break and i'm glad i was able to <laughs> <laughs> every time like I, I watch that and and the fourth wall break happens i just start bursting out in laughter because i just <laughs> I, don't, I don't know did, did you enjoy the fourth wall break part of the fight <laughs> yeah that was great took a lot of time to do as well i had to time that fully <laughs> it was not easy but it was worth it yeah it was it was it's just such a fun watch overall all right well i have been xander i've been tyler and uh and that was between the lines so we hope you have a great rest of your week goodbye adios